Oh, guys, I am feeling good. I am stimulated because I am caffeinated right now. If you're not taking caffeine before your workouts and long runs, in this video, I want to talk about why that's probably a mistake because caffeine is the most studied, proven performance enhancing drug on the market for endurance runners today. Now I wanna get specific about what caffeine is actually going to do to your body and your brain when you're out there running because the effects are profound. But first, a little fun piece of trivia. Did you know that the World Anti-Doping Agency banned caffeine from competitions for 20 years during the period from 1984 to 2004? And as we're soon gonna learn from all of these scientific studies that have been done, that's because caffeine is a proven, undeniable performance enhancer. Luckily for us, it's now legal. All right, let's go over the science because there is a lot. Caffeine use has been shown to improve time to muscle fatigue and increase muscular strength and power. Caffeine also reduces your brain's perception of effort and pain. Caffeine can also improve your reaction time, your focus, and at lower doses, at high doses, it can have the opposite effect, but at higher doses, it can improve your mood and lead to reduced anxiety. So this is especially important for runners who might struggle with pre-race anxiety. A little bit of caffeine can go a long way at getting you more psychologically ready for the task at hand. There was one great study that showed that caffeine intake is going to make you run a faster 1500. It's also going to improve your kick in that 1500 and it's gonna improve your VO2 max. What's not to love? Oh, but that's not all. Caffeine intake has also been shown to improve performance in the 5,000 meters in a one mile time trial, as well as in your cycling time trial performances. And the amazing thing is that all of these benefits aren't just related to your performance. Yes, there's the mood and anxiety benefits, but pre-workout caffeine intake has been shown to reduce post-workout muscle soreness. So if you're someone who gets really sore from your workouts or from races, some pre-workout caffeine is gonna help you race faster and probably reduce a little bit of muscle soreness afterward too. And if you take all the studies together, it's been shown that caffeine improves your performances by about two and a half percent. That is substantial and something that we should definitely be thinking more about. If you are embarking on a PR attempt, if you are trying to nail very aggressive splits in a workout. Having some pre-workout caffeine can be really, really helpful to hit those performances and skyrocket your fitness to new levels. Now, the big question is, how much caffeine do you have to take for all of these amazing performance and recovery and even psychological benefits? And the good news is that First, you don't have to taper off your caffeine. Studies have shown that even if you're a regular coffee drinker or you drink a lot of tea, you are still going to get all of these benefits, even if you don't feel quite as stimulated when you're lining up for that race or workout. So no need to taper. So now the real question becomes, how much caffeine do you have to take? Most studies that look at the performance benefits of caffeine are testing three to six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight. And so for most folks, this is about 150, maybe even up to 400 milligrams of caffeine, depending on your body weight. I'm about 140 pounds, so I'm probably gonna be looking at about 240, 250 milligrams of caffeine. And it also depends on how sensitive you are to caffeine. There's no doubt that caffeine can make you go to the bathroom. And that's because it stimulates your GI system. So if you're not used to caffeine, if you're not really sure how you're going to respond, err on the conservative side, take less than you think you should so that you can evaluate how your body responds to caffeine. And the other piece of really good news is that it almost doesn't matter what form of caffeine you take. I like coffee because it has high number of antioxidants and a whole bunch of other health benefits as well. But one of the reasons why I love taking two before our sponsor for this video is because it has a good amount of caffeine at 120 milligrams, but not so much that I'm going to be super off the wall or anything like that. And it has a high concentration of New Zealand black currant berries. So super high antioxidants, which is going to help with inflammation. But just like beetroot powder, this antioxidant also is a vasodilator. So it 
opens up your blood vessels and allows more blood flow to your extremities, opens up those capillary beds. It's very similar to doing a dynamic warm up before you go running. It really metabolically primes your body for exercise. So you're getting a whole bunch of benefits at once with two before. The high antioxidants, which is gonna help with recovery, the vasodilation effect of those New Zealand blackcurrant berries, as well as all that caffeine, which is really going to help both with your performance, your mindset, as well as that post-workout recovery. All right, let's talk about timing. When you have your caffeine is going to be really important. There have been a lot of studies that show that pre-workout caffeine is the best time to take it because you obviously want to be caffeinated for your race or your workout. Now, luckily, I took a pharmacology class in college, and one of the very few things I learned in that class was the half-life of caffeine and when it reaches its peak potency. Half-life is about four hours, so four hours from now, you're going to have about half of the amount of caffeine still in your system. But the peak caffeine stimulus is going to be about an hour and a half after ingestion. So depending on the length of the event that you're about to run, you can take your caffeine coffee, two before, caffeinated gum, uh, whatever your favorite delivery mechanism is, you can take that about one to two hours ahead of the race or workout so that when you are running hard, when you're in the middle of that effort, you are fully caffeinated, experiencing all of the benefits of that caffeine. But that doesn't mean you're limited to caffeine intake only before your race. You can continue to ingest caffeine during long events like ultra marathons, marathons, even a caffeinated gel or supplement about halfway through a half marathon. This is going to maintain those caffeine levels in your system so that you are blunting your brain's perception of effort and also helping those muscles contract even more forcefully. So if you are training for some of those longer events, I definitely recommend getting in a little bit more caffeine throughout the event to help with all these benefits. And even after my run, I'm still gonna have a little bit more caffeine. What can I say? I love it. Not only does it make me feel good, but post-workout caffeine consumption has been shown to improve muscle protein synthesis and refuel your muscles with glycogen. So what's not to love, guys? I am such a big fan of caffeine for performance, for recovery, for its psychological benefits. If you are a high performance runner, caffeine is a godsend. It is so good for everything that we talked about in this video. Now, if you wanna try some two before, because I really do love this stuff, the antioxidants, the caffeine content, the vasodilation benefits of these black currant berries, really helpful for performance and recovery. You can use code Jason at checkout for 30% off your order of any multi-pack that they sell. And I'd love to know how you use caffeine in your training to get those performance benefits and all of those recovery benefits. Let me know in a comment under this video. And thanks again to Two Before for sponsoring this video.